Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here at the Cannes Film Festival, and it's time to review Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, directed by James Mangold. Indy's an old guy now, but the Nazis are back, and Indiana Jones must now stop them from getting a very powerful artifact. Now, I'm not like a mega Indiana Jones franchise head, okay? I've only seen the first, and some of you franchise heads are probably going to be pretty into this movie, but you know what? I have to say that I didn't really like it. Top Gun Maverick, The Saint. You know, I think a lot of people don't have that high standards for a movie movies like this, so they'll probably just come out and be like, it was fun, what are you talking about? But you know what, I just didn't think there was very much soul in this movie. I know that the Indiana Jones movies are not like well known for being deep or profound, and I didn't really go in expecting that, but at this point in the franchise, when you're five movies deep, you would hope that whatever team is behind reviving this franchise wants to take it in an interesting direction. And while James Mangold may very well be a big fan of the source material, it just doesn't show that much. They don't even have to take it in a crazy new direction. Like, Top Gun Maverick just delivered the goods so well. But sadly, this movie just feels indistinct from any other Disney franchise movie that is running right now. This movie just didn't feel like it has some sort of special Indiana Jones magic that we can only get from an Indiana Jones movie. It just felt like another piece of popcorn entertainment that's kind of forgettable. It's not that it's a bad movie. Like, there are scenes that are fun. I was kind of hooked from the opening scene on the train. I thought that was pretty good. But I after like the third chase sequence, I started checking out a little bit. For me, an action adventure film is going to be dull unless the filmmaking is exceptional or there is something going on with the characters that I think is interesting. And this movie had neither of those. It's not that there's no impressive production design or visual effects work. It's just that the directing is bland. And that's where the movie doesn't live up to the franchise because Steven Spielberg is a director with personality who makes interesting blocking choices, framing choices, and his shot selection is more carefully done. James Mangold has directed some fine films. I mean, I really liked Ford v. Ferrari and Logan. They're well-assembled movies. They look nice, but if we're being honest, they don't really have a distinct style. And James Mangold, unfortunately, just feels like a hired gun here. The movie looks like anybody could have directed it. There are definitely Disney films that have looked worse or muddier, but there's still that feeling in most of the action sequences that there's just this over-reliance on CGI and green screen. Despite the fact that there are some really well-done sets, I would guess maybe they film half the action at the location, and then they go back and they fill in a lot of the work with green screen and it just gives a lot of these scenes a very plasticky quality which has been plaguing a lot of Disney produced films lately. The geography of the action scenes is not bad. It's not blurry and it's not too overcut where you can't see what's going on, but it's also not edited in a way where any shot is designed to actually stand out. Whereas with Spielberg's Indiana Jones, some shots are really memorably framed and they're very well thought out. This movie just did not have that level of thought to it. There are some good sets, like I liked when Indiana Jones and Phoebe Waller-Bridge are in like the temple. That felt like a real tangible set. And I would say Phoebe Waller-Bridge is actually my favorite part of the movie, maybe. She was really fun and her character had a slightly different motivation from Harrison Ford, which gave them an interesting dynamic. She's extraordinarily charismatic, and this franchise is probably going to continue with her. Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, you know, he does the Harrison Ford smirks and stuff that you want him to do, but it doesn't take the character to a new level. It has a nice farewell for him towards the end, but for me, it was too little too late. They didn't really build the movie up to that point. They just kind of threw in things in the end there. It makes you feel good about his send off, but I just wish the rest of the story tried to capture the heart the way that some of those scenes are trying to. And the fact that they come in so late makes them feel a little bit disingenuous. It's weird because Indiana Jones characters like deeper things are coming from something that they made up that happened between the fourth and the fifth movie. And then they just resolve that. And it's like, well, we didn't even like see any of that. So like, why do we even care that much? You know, you have your fun cameos from past characters is like Sala comes in and he's like, Indy! And then Indiana Jones is like, Sala, good to see an old friend. And it doesn't really go like much beyond that. Good to see you, Indy. Antonio Banderas has a cameo, but it's like, why? Why are you using him in this way? It could have been literally anybody playing this role. That's not what Antonio Banderas is for. There's a little kid character who is sort of fun, but what was weird was that he just didn't have a cool introduction. He just kind of like slowly slipped his way into the movie and then became a bigger character. But I was like, you could have done a really fun character introduction for this little kid. 
Mads Mikkelsen as the villain is fine. Just another element of the movie that they just refuse to like take to the next level. And you know, some action scenes are better than others, but you know, towards the end, my God, the overload of effects was kind of annoying. I think it would have been a super cool opportunity to try and pull from some of the more classic filmmaking elements that make Spielberg's original films so great and timeless. The first movie, if nothing else, shows that less can be more when it comes to production. And this is a lesson that Disney seemingly will never learn. You can use effects to create really cool movies like Dune or Avatar or Gravity, but this is definitely not like an instance of that. And I should mention the score from John Williams. It's whatever. There is not a single moment in the movie where I thought that the music was memorable, except for when it goes da -da -da -da! and everyone in the audience is going to be like, oh my God, he did the, da -da 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 -da. the first movie was like nonstop great melodies overscoring these scenes. It pains me to say that the score is not distinct at all. And my God, if John Williams gets another fucking Oscar nomination for this, I swear. Maybe the movie will get visual effects. I think that'd be fine, but those are the only two awards that I think it's going to be contending for at all. I'm somewhere between like a four or a five out of 10 on it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Will you watch Indiana Jones movies forever if they continue to keep pumping them out?